Thank you very much for joining us today. It's terrific to have you with us. Last night I was talking to my brother in Australia. He's 58. And he was saying to me that he still has our Lego box that we played with 50 years ago in his attic <laughs> so that he can play when he has grandchildren. Is that loyalty to his product, the product, common? It's very common. And of course, any brick that has been made since 1958 is compatible, complementary to all other Lego bricks in the world. And we currently do more than 70 billion of them every year. So there's a huge platform for play out there. You've had terrific growth over the past decade or so. What were some of the moves that you made to foster that growth? First and foremost, the company was struggling because it did too many things at the same time. So it lost its focus and its sense of its core and what the capabilities were in that core. What was it really that this company did better than anybody else? And that really came down to a few things like creating this unique material that acts as if it was glued and yet is very easy to take apart. And then that loyalty you talked about with your brother in Australia, there's an incredible community around the Lego brand and the Lego brick. And we didn't nurture that as well. And those were the things we started addressing. And that led us on to an incredible journey of, of very strong growth for more than a decade. At the same time as you were growing, digital devices, smartphones were in play. How did you combine the physical brick with some of these newer technologies? This is not something that's new. This has been going on for decades. Already in the 1990s, you know, video games were making a big dent in the traditional toy market. So from our perspective, uh, this is just something that this is another way of engaging children. So we also now are doing video games with partners and are in fact the world's second largest title in video games to to uh, families with children. We have uh, great content in TV series that are also shown on web distribution and so on. So YouTube is an important channel. So that, that's one aspect of it. Then of course the other aspect is that the whole transformation to online commerce, to uh, inter digitalization of enterprise systems and so on. So all of this relates to making the legal group a digitalized enterprise. And here that has turned out to be a huge advantage for us. The global part of your business, Asia, I believe, is important to you. Is there a big difference in how you market and push Lego there? We offer what I would call a very timeless, but also a very universal brand idea. And you know, you put Lego brands in the hand of children in China, or Afghanistan, South Africa, America, or Germany. The play is the same. The idea is the same. Every human being has the creative urge. The desire to make something that you know it's great that you're creating something that's your own it's exciting you're proud you achieve something you can show it you can feel inner satisfaction from that and, and that's something that applies to all cultures so our assortment is a, a truly global one let's turn a little bit to the organizational aspects so as you were growing how did you stop complexity creeping in how did you keep things less bureaucratic We've tried to overcome it by organizing in quite an unusual way. We have sort of almost like a circular structure whereby instead of me, you know, having a reporting lines into a group of five people as a sort of typical executive committee, I do meet on a monthly basis with a group of 20 senior vice presidents. So it's quite a flat management structure that allows me to have tentacles quite far into the operating business and at the same time to also get that broad group of leaders aligned around central execution matters such as what's the financial estimate and targets that we're rolling after now when we're running the business to actuals what is the demand plan what's the supply capacities we're seeking you know which customers are we putting priority on winning with right now those types of central operating questions get resolved in this central group it's cumbersome to bring 25 people together in a room or at a video conference, but if you really manage the material and the process really well, you achieve huge speed advantages. I've heard you talk about culture being important. What is the special source on your culture here? How do you get it permeated throughout the globe? Our owners, you know, being, being a family control company, have always emphasized we're here to serve the children. We're here to develop children. We're here to give children the very best. And so the way I translate that is that we want to be an irreplaceable but also irresistible brand for children. We want to be on top of their wish list and something they talk passionately about. We measure that by a net promoter score, but that's just, of course, one way of getting an idea of whether you're really there. Then we measure how we create value for our customers and suppliers. We really want to be sure that it's value creating for our customers and suppliers to work with us. 
And then we measure our employees' engagement. And this is actually the foundation of our reward structure. We also reward financial value creation, but we view financial value creation as the result of being highly recommended by children, highly value creating for our business partners and having creative and engaged employees. And if we have all those three things, we can't help each other from actually making a profit at the end of the day. You've made an interesting statement and I just want to make sure I get it correct. <laughs> the blame is not for failure. It is for failing to help or ask for help. How do you actually execute on that when you have a very business performance oriented culture? You know, the, the culture I'm trying to create is one where every year when we celebrate another record result, I get up on, on, on sort of the, the, the beer box and I say, thank you for doing all the things I never asked you to do. I don't want to control. I want to create context. I want to create clarity of culture and strategic choice, but then I want people to surprise me. I don't want a place where people are doing what they've been told to do, because that stifles, that creates bureaucracy, that creates fear. Biggest challenges going forward for LEGO? We're seeing uh, some markets becoming much more volatile, emerging markets in particular. We're also seeing politics becoming much more volatile and less predictable. There does seem to be a trend towards higher protectionism, which is something new uh, in a world where we've, as one of the companies, been benefiting hugely from the opening of, of borders and trade agreements and the, the overall growth in, in world trade over the past decades. We are a durable good, something that people keep for life, but at the same time, we're also a product that's made from oil. And so we need to think about uh, you know, the environmental impacts of that and how do we take a very responsible position on that. Who do you admire? So uh, when, we, when I sort of go into problem solving mode, I sort of often ask the question, you know, how, how would a company like an Apple or a Burberry have been thinking about this question? You know, how would a typical Chinese cutthroat competitor have been thinking about this question? So you've been CEO for 12 or so years. As you reflect on that journey, and if you were sitting opposite someone who's about to start that journey, what would be two or three things you would say to them? You really need to think hard about some simple questions. And those are, why do you exist as a company? What's the really compelling reason why you exist? And of course, ultimately, you want to come up with something that's hugely relevant and at the same time, very unique and really value creating for other people. And so what's our philosophy or almost sort of the, the doctrine? You know, how can I say a few things about strategy and ways of behaving that then permeates the entire organization and allows me to empower and decentralize because the battle is not won in the CEO's office, it's won in the individual markets, in the meetings with the customers. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.